Hello everyone, I'm John, I'm the Indie Fanboy, and welcome to this new little uh, series, um, Baker Street Reviews, where I, you guessed it, watch a bunch of Sherlock Holmes adaptations to see how much I like them. Because, <laughs> as you might have guessed, um, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and you know i love sherlock holmes so much i uh, wrote my uh, my bachelor thesis was actually on sherlock holmes so there you go and i've actually had this idea to like you know review sherlock holmes adaptations for a while so no, why not start now in the new year i i have sort of planned to do this semi regularly maybe i get you know like one movie or show done every month um we'll see how that works um i'm gonna review films or shows i've already seen so it's that there's definitely gonna be you know 2009 guy ritchie sherlock holmes there's going to be bbc sherlock's gonna be on here at some point um but i also uh, want to use this as an opportunity to watch um, movies and adaptations i have never seen or heard of before and today we're actually gonna go with a film i've um, heard of before, but have not seen before, um, namely Sherlock Holmes and the case of the silk stocking, which I only know because I referenced it while working on my bachelor thesis, actually. Um, it's, uh, it's a film from the early 2000s, and it stars Rupert Everett as Sherlock Holmes, and since I have recently watched a film with Rupert Everett, The Happy Prince, which was really good, by the way, um, I thought, yeah, sure, um, why not, why not watch this? Um, I think Michael Fassbender is in it as well, who is always a plus, I love Michael Fassbender. And I didn't really much else I know about this film. I looked it up on Wikipedia, I've got it open here. Um, I think it's like uh, meant as a sort of sequel production to a previous um, adaptation, I think, of, what, what does it say, um, The Hound of the Baskervilles, but there was a different Sherlock Holmes actor, but it's the same Watson actor, it's it's Ian Hart, who played Professor Quirrell in the first Harry Potter film. So, how this is going to go uh, down, I thought I'm, I'm trying a bit of a, a new format with this uh, new series. I'm going to give you a little introduction at a point where I have not seen this film yet, and then I'll give you a little montage um, with moments of me watching the film and commenting on it, and then I'm gonna give you a little review at the end, and I hope you are going to enjoy it. I hope I'm going to en enjoy the film, since I know basically nothing about this, and yeah, let's just uh, dive right into it. Oh, are we in an... Oh, that's an opium den, isn't it? Oh, there we go, that's him. Oh, cool. I think that's an interesting style that we sort of get to see. Um, you know, Sherlock uh, and his drug addiction. Isn't that... The exact same font they use for the BBC show. <laughs> is that where, is that where Stephen Moffat Marquette's got this font from? They want this film where like, yeah, it looks cool. We're taking that. <laughs> Some of the other names sound familiar. Helen McCroy. I'm probably gonna recognise a bunch of people. I mean, British productions always seem to have only 10 actors and they are all over the place. So, yes, yeah, Michael Fassbender, here we go. Female, approximately 20 years of age. Younger, surely. Oh, uh, here we go. Dr. Watson. Ah, Watson. Dr. Oh, they say Lestrade. I don't like it when they say Lestrade. I know it's all the well, obvious, but I guess I'm just too, too used to Stop Lestrade. It. Tied about the throat. It's an old trick of Holmes. There's a world of information in a knot. Oh, the short Watson is adorable. Jacket. I like him. He's cute. Chief, uh, round collar. Nice. Certainly very English. 
definitely Victorian. Just look at that fog. I feel like this is a bit... Fashion-wise, this could be said later. Maybe already after the Victorian period. Half a stone, exactly. Indeed. I should have thought it was a little more. It sounds so... like, what's... I only know this guy's voice because of Crow. I don't think I've seen this actor anything else. So it, it's kind of weird seeing Why him in a dogging my heels, just like more like outfit, all the face, case. no ball, the mold on the back Young of his girl. head. Oh, is he reading a book about bees? That's a nice detail. This is Hudson. This is Hudson. I'm, I'm liking the layout of, of the flat. The three days. Looks very good. The interior design's great, I think, no, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> Just no. throw that away. Yes, classic, I like it. Have you been tied? Ooh, the clue. What is it? Is it Silence oh. of the Lamp style? That can't be healthy. Get on the telephone to Scotland Yard. Okay, how did no one find that? Of lady. Oh, Roberta, was that Michael Fonspender? Would you take my daughter's place for now? Yes, Your Grace. Oh, look at him, baby face Into Michael Fonspender. Adorable. Oh no, interpretive dancing. Let us not forget that the night we present this tableau, the king will be there. The king. Okay, so it's definitely after Victorian time, so it's early 20th century, so maybe like 1902 or 1903. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm calling it Michael Fassbender did it because he's the butler and the butler did it, and it's Michael Fassbender. It's not her. Holmes has thrown You're so sorry. much shade. Just as I said, it's not her. Save your breath to cool your porridge. Hmm? What's this so adorable? Just, oh my god, I love it so much. Just the way he smiled. You just, I don't know. Pray, take a seat. Oh, look at that coat. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. You give me carte blanche to act in this affair. Within the bounds of decency. Not just look at him. Could, could, have, could have been him as well. Just, oh, just, just look at that you? man. He looks evil. Look at that coat, that moustache, that face. Oh, I, I can't, I'm afraid, Holmes. I'm dining with my fiance. So, what's in her mind? Ah. Eight for eight thirty. So, we're going with that probably. I'm guessing Watson's second uh, wife, fiance. Why on earth are there heavy booted policemen trampling everywhere like a herd of buffalo? <laughs> Come on, everybody out! Getting the fingerprints all over the place, just look at them. Car. You know, I feel like Holmes is often right in these cases. They ruin everything. Okay, I feel like we're overdoing it with the fog at this point. <laughs> Illustrate. And here. How can you see anything? Two were smoked in a holder, and two were extinguished beneath a gentleman's shoe. Shouldn't put up a fight. Oh, that's classic cigarette analysis. I was like it. Struggle. I believe she knew her killer. Calling it. Either the dad or Michael Fassbender. He looks good in the servants here, the boy, by the way. Sherlock! Oh, he married and is engaged to an American. Jenny. Please call me Jenny. John, take Sherlock's wonder where, where he found her. Oh, that's interesting. It's a, it's a nice touch. We'll never know anything about You look like a whiskey wife. man to me. John and I met at a conference in Zurich. I was there for the ski. Hmm. I'm a trained psychoanalyst. Surely you knew that. No. But then, as I understand it, Sherlock, you dislike and distrust women. Ah, quickly, pour more wine. Women are one of the necessary evils. 
<laughs> okay, okay, bit harsh. My brain has always governed my heart. Nice, that's an original quote. To Do you know this? Richard von Kraft Ebbing's Psychopathia Sexualis. Not intimately. I warn you, oh, please don't tell me we're going in the direction of, you know, senses, but the case the, whoever did is evil because they're cross-dressing or something. Reference for anyone interested in sexual derangement. Well, thank you. Well, you that's going to be it. interesting for You're sure. Kind. It has bestiality, exhibitionism, transvestism, cockophilia. I'm out of the room for ten minutes. Yeah, it looks kind of interesting. I like that. Rape mutilation. <laughs> Look what happens. Lust murder, you know, in a way, Watson on. probably found the perfect wife. Oh. Ooh, spooky, that's a nice shot. That was cool, I like that. It was really small. And he gets his money back. Ah, he's reading the book. Reading montage. You always love a good information reading montage. It is possible he worked for a dressmaker's, visited by Lady Alice or Georgie. Find okay, got calling it again, Michael Fassbender. He's a butler, he would probably know these kinds of things. Call it. Type and be drawn from the same class. It seems we are searching for a multiple murderer. Oh, we're doing the responsible for the death criminal minds Lady profile Alice scene. And Lady Georgina. <laughs> okay, I kind of like it. This is no ripper. No frenzied lust murderer. He is charming, presentable, and he selects his victims with enormous care. Okay, definitely Michael Fassbender. Just Extremely listen to that urgent. description. And once he has them, he must take them somewhere. Is Sixpence? No. Half sovereign. <sighs> Remarkable, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. Ah, oh, of course we got the line. Of course we did. I do have other demands upon my time, Holmes. I am to be married. I'm aware of that, Watson. When has his Could marriage spare an hour ever been a problem that when it comes to going with Holmes on a case that has never been a problem in the books, let's admit it. I'm afraid not. I lost all my personal belongings in a fire back Ooh, in Ooh, American accent. Nice. I there was one girl who fits your description exactly, who was, in fact, American. No kidding. But she went by the name of Sarah O'Brien. O'Brien was her mother's maiden name. I like it when Watson gets to these sort of undercover, Are you, a religious man, you know, gathering man? information I'm missions. I like it when he gets to do that. It's very practical. My Lord, I'm sure you'll be able to do as your father asks. For what it's worth, I think you'll emerge from this ordeal a very remarkable young woman indeed. You know, I like it when uh, when Thank Holmes you. gets these kinds of moments because you know some shows you know like you need to Sherlock as much as I love it. He sometimes characterizes Sherlock as being a bit too what rude, do but I like it when he gets moments like this where you can see that worry. he's still able to you know empathize with people uh, and able to support them. Suggestive. He was buried in Whitechapel at his expense. Oh, good work, Watson. Thank you, Holmes. Uh, I think you would have appreciated my performance. I, on the other hand, have been studying the fashion plates. Pale grey is all the rage. <laughs> With a white tulle burr and pink malmaison. <laughs> Can you imagine going like clothes shopping? I could cover the scenes of these crimes oh, no. with a half crown. Piece. No, 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 we're not going there. It's fishing in a very. What in God's name are you doing, Holmes? You look like you're about to dance the fandango. You are oh, please let him dance a fandango. I really want to see that. Against which I must learn to guard. Can shake it. Mere passion aught of earth may sever. Always wear your mask, kids. Even love. Dr. Watson does it. And always wash your hands. See? Take Dr. Watson as an example. I mean, don't set your hands on fire necessarily, but, you know, keep them clean. Oh 
no. Oh no, 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 no. The girl is literally out of the picture, and that's not good. Imogen? Imogen! How does this keep Imogen. happening in the movies? And how does no one notice? Ah, nice. Oh, it's like a Why do you reek of surgical violin. spirit? In adaptations. Trying to There's this thing I think sort of moments of humanize him, then you know, as a man who loves music and plays violin. I like it when you get to see that. Ooh. Oh, are we getting the morphium to contain? What is it? It's always interesting, I think, when, when the adaptation they include that Charlotte did, in fact, take on drugs. I wanted to talk to you about a time you spent as footman working for Lord Marham. Do you remember ah, a young here girl? We go. Lady Marham's personal maid, Just Sarah O'Brien. Look at yes, that face. She was dismissed from Lady Marham's service. I believe so. Do you have any idea why? No. Do you know what became of her? Yes, I do. She committed suicide. Oh, it's not so different. And the staff talked about it. Thank you. You've been most helpful. I'm going to ask a police officer to take your fingerprints. They've already been taken. Yes, but there was a problem. I should let them done again. You can have no objection. No. Good. Wait here. Okay, where is it going with this? Because clearly... Oh, it's a bit of a lie, wasn't it? Excuse okay, me. Rupert Someone Everett is very Go tall. Come if on. he's even taller than Michael Fosbender. Sure, that way. No, this way. Never thought Michael Fosbender could look tiny. Oh, it's meant to be like sort of confrontation. Oh, well, let's see, let's see, let's see. What happens? What happens? What happens? She looks at him. Yeah. Although. Maybe it's not that him really because. That's a cruel thing to do, Sherlock. Uh, I think it's like it's still, still a bit too early to have the real killer. Maybe it's not him. No, he was attending the Duchess in front of a hundred dinner guests when Lady Alice was taken. The hell Horton girl has been through a terrible ordeal. She does, cannot be in her right mind. It must be a case of mistaken identity. Does he have a twin? Have nothing against the man, Holmes. Nothing at all. Is this... Please sir. tell me the solution. It's like he has a Duke and Duchess twin. Duke here to see you, sir. I'd like to apologise, Your Grace, for... She recognised him, so it must be someone who looks like him. Where were you last night, Your Grace? Well, let's see where this goes. Do they have a... Are they having a thing? Do they have an affair? Is that what's going on? Maybe it's like... I don't know, there's something going on. It's weird. Ooh, getting fancy. Yes, I said that's a cool mask ball or something. It just has to be. Where's Mr. Holmes? I wish I knew. I had you to meet him here. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes. The second eye is criminal expert on Europe. May I inquire, Your Excellency, who has the honor to be first in your view? Uh, to a man of a precisely scientific mentality, the work of Monsieur Bertillon. Oh, has a oh, that's very strong him, appeal. Um. Are you sure you're feeling quite all right? Oh no. You look a little faint. Oh no, 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 no. no. I'm quite no, no. all right. I assure you. Go back to your mistress. You might find a glass of champagne reviving. Just the way he's saying it. No, 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 no. Michael Fussman's way too good at being creepy. Oh no, this is... Oh no, 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 no. Now please leave me. Holmes to the rescue! <laughs> Uh, oh, that was great. Oh, that was great. I like that. Everyone tackle him. Time they will. Oh, for God's sake. Because there is not one Charles Allen, but two. Oh my God, it really what? is twins. Are you joking me? Fail, 
whatever remains, however improbable. Oh, we're doing true. twins. But what do you mean two? The so plot the twist is it's twins. Custody must have a double. In English, Holmes. An identical twin. <laughs> oh, come so on. So one of them is still on the loose. This yes, is so cliche. How can you be sure? He was making his move on Lady Roberta. Uh, Holmes, I really have to think about BBC Sherlock when he says it's never now twins. The twin has been going about his trip. We have him at last. I mean, probably not. Since there are. Yeah, 20 minutes left. How is your wife? She's been taken into a sanatorium. Perhaps that's for the best until she regains her strength. No, 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 no. What's it? Come on. I fear. It's early 20th, 20th century. A sanatorium for women is probably not a good place right now. A gentleman, of course. Why is no one looking after these kids when they know that several of them have already been taken? <laughs> oh god, oh no, oh no, there's that evil shark grin. Oh, he's way too good at this. How? How is he able to just carry her out of the house? No one seeing. Oh no, he's pro I would have loved if he had like casually answered the answered the phone with her uh, on his shoulder. Oh my god! How? Hello. Also, wouldn't you like sack that guy from your household, even if he didn't do? But you know, he's just he's a suspect in a serious. But a kidnapping case, wouldn't you be like, maybe keep away from my house for now or from my kids? Would you do that? I, I know it's theoretically someone else, but you know, it would probably be significantly harder to do the whole thing if you fired the guy who's working in the house. No, 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 I don't want to see, no, no, I don't want to see how, how he creepily undresses himself in front of the girl, I don't want to, no, 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 we're not doing that. Oh god, no, no, no. Where no. does he take them? Oh god, no, 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 no. I mean, I've always thought my favourite actors playing serial killers, but this it's is... Impossible. Oh, sure it's just uncomfortable. Not. You have been duped. You... These two men have... Consistently taking each other's place, pose one as another, shared everything. Everything. Oh God, oh God, no. Did your woman's instinct not tell you? I don't blame her. Oh, come on, I Watson. ask you once Don't victim blame that woman. Your grace. The brain oh God, the how does this movie? <laughs> After keep. the dancers leave, how does the movie keep doing that? After the time you think it doesn't get creepy or more uncomfortable, the movie goes there. How? Granted, Michael does have a nice singing voice. Okay, how? Come on, come on. Hi! Is he not? Anchor. I wonder if we're gonna get an explanation for why he's doing this. Is it just like sexual sadist, he's into it, or is there gonna be like a psychological explanation? What? Ow! Release her or I will shoot! Can you be sure of your aim? Not entirely. I mean, I'm not. Sure one thing. Just look at how he's holding the gun. Her, he really can't be sure of his aim. The young girls that you want, that you like, they don't even look at you, do they? They do when they're here. Because yeah, he feels inferior and can't. Oh, come on. Uh, weak explanation, people. Just weak. Oh no, there's a second Michael Fassbender! Someone turn around! Yeah. 
That could have hit an important artery. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Hooray! Watson got married. Look at him. And it is only right and proper that Watson has at last found himself a charming and agreeable... Why at last? He was married before. Doctor and Mrs. Watson, I wish you health and happiness. Health and happiness. Oh, here we go. Watson married. Case closed. Holmes is smoking. What more could you want? Cool. That was... Well, interesting. Not bad. Not great, but, you know, I had a good time. Uh... I'll tell you all about that uh, later, as in right now. Okay, so that was uh, Sherlock Holmes in the case of the silk stocking. Um, I liked it. I thought it would be well, you know, uh, the storyline is a bit cliche in some places, and it's not, you know, uh, it's kind of obvious in a way who did it. So in that regard, you know, the crime might not be the most interesting or suspenseful one. Um, uh, it sort of, I think, goes with, you know, um, this popular sort of, you know, sexual, sadistic, uh, deep psychologically disturbed sort of serial killer vibe, which, I mean, is still very popular now, even though the film was made in the early 2000s. Um, but, you know, Michael Fassbender does a good job of playing creepy guy, he's really good at that. Um, but yeah, I really like Rupert Everett as, as Sherlock Holmes, especially like physically speaking. He very much resembles how I imagine, uh, what I imagine Holmes to look like. You know, very tall, um, sort of, you know, a hook like prominent nose, big forehead, you know, just like very like angular sharp features. You know, not necessarily handsome, but, you know, interesting looking. And I think Rupert Everett, I think, uh, follows that quite well at the time the film the film was made. So I think that works quite well. And... Um, I think the portrayal of his character, like how Holmes is written, I think also works um, mostly well. You know, he's very analytic and sharp and, you know, a bit cold sometimes. But I'll, um, I also like, uh, as we saw, um, that he is also occasionally given these moments where you, know, where you can see that he has sympathy for these people. Because that is very much something that the literary Holmes did. You know, sure, he was sometimes a bit too cold. Um... But, you know, he still sometimes had these moments where you felt like, okay, no, he still very much understands what these what these people go through emotionally, or he has the capability of showing, I do actually care about these cases I'm working on. I like when you get these kinds of moments. So, in that regard, I think um, the Sherlock Holmes character works um, quite well. This is one line where he's really harshly commenting on women, you know, like them being a necessary evil. Um, which, you know, is sort of kind in line, since we know Sherlock Holmes has sexist um, tendencies. Um, even though he never really uttered a line that harsh, I think, in the canon. Especially since this is set in the early 20th century. So after he's already met Irene Adler and, you know, views on uh, women have progressed a little bit at the time, one might presume. I still think it's a bit harsh. Um, in general, it's just like a lot of, you know, casual sexism, sexism, which, you know, I guess makes sense for the time. You know, it's still like, I don't know, 1903, 1904. Um, it's not like uh, <laughs> that, uh, that sexism suddenly went away after the Victorian times ended. Um, so that's clearly not the case. But, you know, this, the film is still being written, you know, by 21st century people. So sometimes maybe... A bit too much on the nose, especially like from Watson. Sometimes if there's like a victim blaming moment, since I feel like Watson would really understand that. Watson is usually usually the understanding one, or the one who calls out the sexist or misogynistic remarks. And we do get these kinds of comments from Watson in the film. I don't think that's really good. Um, in general, it's sort of this. Um, classic crime, modern crime idea with, you know, a sexually sadistic killer and, you know, he's into women and it gets creepy. And that regard, that's nothing new and maybe you should stay away from this if you're not really comfortable with these kinds of topics, you know, uh, sexual assault, there's also, you know, implied rape a bit and, 
you know, uh, I would definitely understand that you might, might want to skip that one. I, I definitely got that. Uh, since we already mentioned um, Watson, I I, I kind of like Watson in this. Um, played by Ian Hart. Um, he's adorable. Just, I don't know, just look at his face. He's adorable. And I like that Watson here doesn't get sidelined to just being the character, you know, who's a bit dumb, who just follows Holmes around. Um, but that Watson really gets to do something here. He gets to shine as a doctor, which is always good when they uh, emphasize that in films. I like that it shows um, his practical side. And I already mentioned in the commentary, I like it when um, Watson gets to do sort of like these... Um, side missions where he has to find out something or maybe he has to be incognito somewhere. I really like that and I thought the scene where he pretends to be um, that American man I thought was really really cool. And yeah, yeah cause it sounded quite good as far as I can tell. So I really like that. Um, so individually speaking I really like the portrayal of Holmes and Watson even though maybe the chemistry between the two actors it was good enough so it worked for the film but it's definitely not the same chemistry as, like, for example, with um, Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman or um, in the Guy Ritchie films. There they can really tell that the actors have very, very good chemistry, um, which I was a bit missing in this film. So it felt more like, or maybe also, uh, that was maybe also uh, a bit on purpose. It felt more like, you know, they are colleagues, they are fond of each other, but, you know, I didn't really feel like, you know, we're best friends and I trust this man with my life and all that. I didn't really feel that from the actor's chemistry, which is sad since this is arguably the most important part about adapting Sherlock Holmes, that the chemistry between Holmes and Watson works. Um, speaking of Watson, he is engaged in this film to a new wife, which makes sense, you know, since he gets married um, twice in the stories and um, his fiance sort of serves as a plot device like she is not really a character apart from you know this is you know the fact that she is Watson's fiance isn't necessarily even her character it's just that it's more easier to say okay this is Watson's new wife so we can easily more easily introduce a new character and She's basically just there to provide the psychological explanations because she's this expert in, in, in psychology and, you know, sexual sadism and all this sort of stuff. Um, which is basically all she does. It's not like she does anything else. She's just there to give Holmes the book and sort of give him the idea about, uh, you know, psychology. And she's, she very much just works as a, a plot device who's, who is the one who's able to talk about psychology and why the man's doing that, etc, etc. Um... In that regard, maybe not really that good of a female character. Um, also, since uh, it felt a bit like a, 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 I already mentioned it in the commentary, uh, it is also a bit of a cliche, you know, in 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 twenty first century adaptations when when they attempt to like write a strong female character, especially if it's like about a story that's set in the past, they are. Um, you know, they give a woman a high ranking place or an expertise place in an, I don't know, like an academic field in this case where women normally would never have that status and that's supposed to make her like a strong female character and I mean, she, she she's definitely smart and she is useful the knowledge she has is used in the story in that regard um, she's also good there's nothing really much beyond her character which is a bit sad I mean, of course, we have to focus on, you know, the case and Holmes and Watson mostly uh, but, you know, apart from Watson's fiance, there wasn't really any, there weren't really other, other female characters in the story, apart from the young women who get kidnapped, because that's the story, and the, uh, the, the, the Duchess, who has an affair with the man who turns out to be the killer, so not that great either. Um, maybe also in regards to the writings, uh, the dialogue mostly feels sort of modern, but they have this adaptation problem where they try to be like authentic and be like oh we're doing it like the books and just like randomly throw in quotes from the books occasionally when it suits them which you know is nice for people like me who are able to be like oh that's a quote from the book even though you know it sounds so much different than the rest of the dialogue that's being spoken in the film um so it's just sort of, the quotes are just sort of there for recognition, which I can understand since you kind of want to do that with adaptations, but, you know, maybe just 
try to get the dialogue closer to uh, the actual writing style of the novels. Or just leave out the quotes, because you can just tell that they're different. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think I think it's a solid film. Like, it's definitely not the best or worst adaptation I've seen. But you know, it works. I really, really like Rupert Everett as Sherlock Holmes. I think that, w- that worked really well for the film. Um, the writing is okay. The story is a bit cliched, especially with the twins. Why did it have to be twins? That's just such a bad cliche. <laughs> Plot twist. Um... But, you know, I think as as a, as a sort of, you know, casual, quote-unquote casual adaptation, I think it works quite well. It, it sort of mixes, you know, the classic stories and the, and, and the traditional um, setting that we know from the books with, you know, a bit more modern ideas and modern writing, which is not unusual in that regard, I guess. Um, but, you know, I... I pr- I'd probably rewatch that again at, uh, at some point. I, I, I had my fun with it. Uh, it was some really cool and nice moments in it. Some moments where you were like, why did this have to be here? But, you know, I think as a Sherlock Holmes fan or, you know, as a fan of um, crime movies or something, I think you can definitely give it a watch. It's it's entertaining enough. Maybe don't expect too much. But, um, yeah, I have fun with it. Okay, so that's it for the first Baker Street review. I hope you enjoyed it. And if there are any more ideas you have for movies, TV shows, um, or any other kind of adaptation I should check out, definitely put them down in the comments below. I'm gonna make a list. Like I said, I already have some plans as to what kind of adaptations I'm, I wanna, uh, I wanna do. Um, but there are so many more out there that I really don't know about or have never heard of. So definitely put some of uh, your recommendations down in the comments and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done it already. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.